All right, continuing on with the Griffin challenge today. The first two videos in this series will be linked in the description. I would recommend watching them in order. Uh, some of the stuff I'm doing here will make a bit more sense if you've seen those two videos. So up until this point, I've been using Spider to try and get the early level three Griffin, but there are actually a few other methods you can use. Um, for instance, you could take a level three Stoat to turn five or six and sell it and, and get a Griffin that way. Uh, of course, if you do that, then the earliest you could possibly get the tier six would be turn seven. But with the spider, uh, it is possible to get it before then. You could also use a stork. Uh, however, again, you know, the stork would have to be on turn. Um, you would have to pull the stork on uh, turn seven or eight, I guess it would be, to get a tier three. So again, we're trying to do this as early as possible. So neither of those uh, are really going to be optimal. But the other tier two that you can employ is the guinea pig. And the guinea pig allows you to shortcut the leveling up process. So we've got the, uh, the first guinea pig here and you can see it spawns another guinea pig. So we actually only need to find three of them in order to get a level three. And then with the new food item, the water of youth, you can convert the guinea pig into one of those other three pets that I just mentioned. So if you convert it into a spider, you can then pill that spider and potentially get the griffin that way. And you can also get stoat or stork from transforming the guinea pig. You know, they're all tier two. And there is kind of this uh, circular economy going on where you can convert between a bunch of different pets multiple times as you try and find the spider or the griffin. So, uh, yeah, there are a couple of drawbacks to this method, though. Clearly, it's going to be much, much faster to get the level three. But once you get the level three, you then have to hit the uh, one in nine uh, guinea pig to spider, and then also the one in 10 from spider to griffin. Whereas with the spider method, you're just having to hit that one in 10, but obviously you're much less likely to get the early level three spider. So we've got the level three uh, guinea pig here. It transforms into a stork. So we could actually pill it or water of youth it both of them would could result in a spider, but since we have the pill there, we might as well save it in case we happen to get the griffin. And because this is the uh, first run I'm, I'm featuring here, we are going to get the griffin. I, I had very, very few runs where I actually got the griffin. Um, most games I was buying three or four Water of Youth at, at minimum and not finding one. So yeah, if you're planning on trying to do this, and I have encountered many people in the arena already trying to do it, just be prepared that if you're gonna try and get the earliest possible uh, level three tier six, you're gonna have to play a, a huge number of games. So having got the treasure map activated here, uh, it's gonna break and turn into the treasure chest. So now I just need to find a pill in order to pill the mandrill and now the treasure chest is going to activate immediately on turn seven and we get the level three mantis shrimp which doesn't seem like a whole lot you know 12 12 stats but just wait a second and you'll just see how ridiculous this ability is to have available on turn seven so i'm also going to start leveling up the parrot because it can uh, replicate the mantis shrimp's ability and therefore we're kind of getting multiple uh, levels of tier six value, even though we're only at uh, turn seven. Now that opposing team was clearly awful, but then <laughs> we were all on zero wins on uh, turn seven. So we were gonna be presented with a, a terrible opponent, no matter what there. And I think now I'll give up on the weasel and play triple links. So we're gonna have a ridiculous number of snipes and uh, we're probably gonna face relatively soft opposition for a while until we get to the later turns. So yep, completely wiped the opposing team. I think that team had a level three Baku there, which is uh, kind of unusual. Not many uh, players taking that uh, beyond the early game. So we'll bring in the Blobfish, give the Octopus the pie, and uh, that will give it a little boost in stats. And maybe if there are any survivors from the opposing team, the Octopus will be able to take them out. But again, we're going to wipe the opposing team, although we do only end up with the Mantis Shrimp as the only survivor on our side. Level 2 Parrot though. So now we are actually, of course, on turn 10. So 
we're in the range where opposing teams are going to start to actually have tier 6s like that last team had uh, Leopard. So getting by with the early tier 6 is um, rapidly going to become uh, less effective. <laughs> but we do wipe that team as well. Uh, level 3 Parrot is becoming a possibility. I think I'm going to give up on that Blobfish, yeah. Uh, at this point, I don't really like holding multiple Blobfish for, you know, if I've already got one on board, I would need to find two pills. And um, I think, uh, yeah, probably not worth it. A jump team, a lot of jump teams I'm seeing these days are putting the pet that they want to have second in first position and then letting the Sushinoko jump in. And I think that's partly to block... Uh, eggplant. I'm pretty sure that would uh, protect you from eggplant if um, you're uh, opposing, you know, any of your pets get moved, the Sushinoko is going to jump right to the front and therefore you're not going to uh, lose your correct ordering. I could be wrong, it maybe doesn't protect against every eggplant, but I think it probably protects from second position eggplant. Here's a, a good dog team and another team that we end up completely wiping except for the bee that respawns at the end. So it's all looking very nice. We've got the uh, the turn seven level three tier six after I didn't actually count the number of attempts. It was a lot of attempts, but um, you know I felt like having got the turn eight one that it wasn't going to take too many more games before I got a um, a turn seven one. This is unusual. You don't see many uh, teams playing the goats, the two goats that you have to um, buy sell in order to. Uh, buff the other goat. They're, they're kind of probably one of the most awkward abilities that's been added uh, to the custom only pet. So not many people play them. But now I'm going to take the level on the cat. I'm still pretty confident I've got a good chance of winning with the volume of snipes that we have. And yeah, I'm just deciding whether or not pair is worth freezing. Probably not. So just hoping for another fragile opponent here for our mantis shrimp. Unfortunately, it is Triple Monkey plus Hippo. Just an absolutely revolting team. And the Hippo hangs on with 2 HP and then 1 HP. It was probably just in second position because it had already got the uh, 50 health from the Monkey buffs. So yeah, a bit of a nightmare opponent there. And uh, I guess it was probably a bit unrealistic to expect a win at the first attempt with the turn uh, 7 level 3 tier 6. Especially when it wasn't a scaler. Um, like uh, Lioness. But we go again, and so here I transform the guinea pig into a stoat. Can't sell the stoat on turn 4, otherwise you'll get a level 3 um, tier 2. I suppose I could have sold the stoat and tried to get the spider that way, but I'd rather just wait one turn and then sell it. I actually should have mentioned that my opponent in that last battle was uh, Scave Hectio, or Scave Hectio, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But they are a very talented artist and they post uh, custom pet designs in the official Discord. So I highly recommend going and checking those out. So back to the game, we're just looking for mandrills. I need two more mandrills to get the level two so that we can uh, pill uh, on turn seven and immediately convert the treasure chest into the tier six. I take the betta fish here. Maybe I could have just rolled there. I mean, it was pretty likely I was gonna lose this battle regardless of the opponent. Although, having said that, I have faced some really awful teams uh, in the last few days, and it is definitely possible that you face someone else who is going for this challenge, at least uh, at time of recording. So here I find a mandrel, but I don't sell the betta fish. So again, I'm just trying to um, keep the two hearts rather than uh, buy the mandrel and reduce my chances of winning. I don't know how much extra uh, juice the betta fish really gives the team but we do end up winning anyway so maybe that was the correct decision but I'm going to bring in a mandrel and luckily I roll another one after only two more rolls very fortunate there to get away with that uh, sequence of decisions I think and then again here I make a really bad mistake where I sell the betta fish thinking I need to um, get the gold in order to buy the Cerberus but actually, the Cerberus is free from the Griffin, so yeah, a really bad mistake there. Probably just a bit excited trying to get the Cerberus into the team as quickly as I could. But with pretty much any level 3 tier 6, if it's not a scaler, 
you're you're very likely to start winning the subsequent battles because the abilities just aren't designed to be available this early. So we're summoning uh, three eight eight, um, which uh, yeah, on turn seven isn't really too fair. So I think again, having seen the parrot, we used the parrot to good effect last time. I'm going to use it to replicate the tier six, so it's almost like having two of them on the team. Very favourable matchup here. The Kraken plus Double Skunk isn't going to do much to us. Uh, the um, pups that spawn are going to take out their whole squad. So here actually I think I should probably combine the Anteaters and then pill them to get the double ants. And then that would give me a lot more gold to try and find the level up on the Parrot and therefore gain access to more tier 6 units. But for whatever reason I decide to stick with the Anteater. Um, probably a bit of a questionable decision there. And now I'm going to take the Lynx, just generally a strong pet, especially since we already have a, a level 3 unit. And I was a little bit scared when I saw this. Four Scalers plus a, a, a tier 1. Clearly they're going for the achievement on the uh, Alchemides there. But luckily the uh, four Fire Pups managed to get rid of it and we do actually win. That would have been really unfortunate to lose a heart there. But the shop ends up providing us with the double level up anyway. And I think I'm going to take Manta Shrimp again. But yeah, you can see I'm probably angry with myself here that I didn't pill the Anteater. And so I end up losing out on all the, uh, the extra gold I could have had by selling the ants. So now that I have multiple strong ability units, I'm now not sure what the best thing to do with a parrot is. So let me know in the comments, what would you do here? Would you have the Parrot copy the Cerberus, the Mantis Shrimp, or the Lynx? And in the end, I decide to go for Mantis Shrimp. And we're going to remove the Tamarin as a result. This person, I, I see them all the time. They always play um, Jellyfish, Clownfish <laughs> every single game. Um, yeah, I guess more power to them if they're still enjoying the game, even though they're playing the same pets every time. So we get a couple of nice hits there with the uh, cat buffs. And I'm just going to stick with the same lineup. If we won the, that last turn, we should just uh, persevere. And again, we're going to remove a lot of their units from the front. And the lemon, thankfully, helps tank a bit of the damage from the rhino there. And uh, we get the win. So we move on to seven trophies. Not sure this is the greatest purchase of an eggplant ever. Uh, it does mean now that the damage from the Mantis Shrimp and the Parrot is going to be split over two units. But uh, we're not going to be punished against this opponent because they have two weak units at the front. They both get removed straight away. And I think the Chimera uh, spawns are not going to be big enough. Yeah, we're, we're going to be fine. So on to eight trophies now. And maybe I should buy the Lettuce here, not the Pear, because we do have three tier six units. Yeah, I do realize it in the end, but at this point I've now wasted the cat trigger, so I can't uh, buy the pizza. The behemoth loses the melon, although actually it doesn't matter because we're going to move the visitor in front of it, which is going to mean that the fire pup gets the kill on the behemoth because of the exposed ailment. Actually, this team has a good dog, despite not having anything that synergizes with it, so I'm a little bit unclear on what they were doing. But good hits again from the uh, pizza. I really should have bought the chocolate on the mantis shrimp there, not the cat. Uh, that was definitely a mistake, but luckily the level up gave us another mantis shrimp anyway. And it's our old friend, monkey, leopard, tiger. So despite uh, the fire pups getting a couple of kills, they're not gonna be able to um, clear the uh, high health monkey there at the back. So another lettuce. Plus 3-3 three, three on 3 units is pretty nice. And although we get 2 links, I think I'm just going to take the 9 health from the boosted waffle. And hope for a good opponent. And it is another leopard team, but luckily one of the leopard shots gets wasted on the links. And then the links revenge kills the leopard. They do get some extra stats from the warthog plus hippocampus combo. But we are actually going to kill their last 2 units with the Cerberus, get the achievement. And uh, yeah, I was pretty pleased at this point that I'd finally got the win with a turn 7 level 3 tier 6.
So on to some bonus clips to finish. And this is another turn eight. So I pill the mandrill and get the level three tier six, and it is a cat. And I think you can really do some pretty nasty things with all the tier six scalers when you get them early, as long as you have a decent number of lives intact. And I think here on turn 12, our stats just aren't high enough, given that I've had the cat for so many turns. I guess I've spent a lot of gold getting the other pets into the team since, you know, the team tends to be pretty weak when you first get the tier six unit. And actually here we're going to lose to this Parrot Abomination team. I wasn't aware at the time, but it seems like Parrot's bugged with Abomination that the Parrot can actually replicate the abilities of the pets inside the Abomination at level 3, which uh, definitely seems busted. But uh, yeah, it was an amusing team to lose to anyway. So here's another turn 8 one. I get the Tapir. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have a team set up for Tapir, so we're going to transform it into a Highland Cow. I think I had uh, Highland Cow plus something else in the pack that was supposed to spend the trumpets, but in this particular game I don't uh, find them. And actually here we're going to lose to uh, a Magpie with Melon. Uh, I think we might have won there if they didn't have Melon, or maybe it would have been a tie, but um, yeah, that team just uh, could not get going. Here's another one on turn 8, but we're only on one heart. So we're going to need something special, and Wildebeest is not it. I think that was probably what I was hoping for with the uh, Highland Cow team. So we bring in the new uh, Crisp unit, uh, the Fire Snake thing. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it at the moment. And we spend the Crow uh, Chocolate on the Lynx. But this team is just absolutely horrible. No synergies to speak of. I guess the Lynx does synergize with any level 3 uh, unit, but you can see there it only does um, 6 damage because we don't have a full team. And uh, yeah, that one just uh, never had a chance. So again, turn 8, 2 hearts. Pill the Mandrill. And I think it's going to be Tapir again. Yes. Now actually here, I didn't think about it at the time, but I could have just pilled the Tapir to get a level 3 Hawk or a level 3 Parrot. Um, but I feel like maybe that would be kind of betraying the whole idea of the challenge of, of getting the early tier 6. Um, you know, I didn't really want to waste it on a, on a tier 4 unit. And uh, Maybe I thought I would be able to transition into a team that actually made use of the Tapir. But I include this one because we actually face uh, Hawker P, the most evil man in SAP, who was also doing the same thing. And you can see uh, it was Mandrill level 2 at the front and the level 3 sheep, that, which um, I presume came from the spider. And I think, uh, yeah, we'll skip ahead here. And I did actually add some more summon pets to the pack so that Tapir made more sense. So we've got the grizzly bear, and I think I'm going to put the parrot behind the grizzly now. Maybe that's a bit of a mistake. I should probably just put the parrot behind the stork, in all honesty. Um, and having the tapir copy a hydra doesn't really make a whole lot of sense either, because there's not going to be a space for more than one uh, hydra head to spawn. And we get matched with another monkey plus hippo team. Actually, this is a really strange looking team, because the two monkeys are just base stats. Um, I, I don't know what the Yeti's doing there either because um, leveling up the rabbit and leveling up the monkeys aren't going to do anything with the uh, the hippo pretty much on 50-50 already. And uh, yeah, that uh, ramshackle team ends up losing. So we've got another one here where I've already transformed a guinea pig into a lizard. And I actually get matched with Kyogre with the level 3 anglerfish on turn 7. Now this had already been posted in the Discord, so I knew it was out there, but this was the only time out of hundreds and hundreds of attempts where I actually faced someone else who had an early tier 6 unit. So that was really fun to see that. And then the uh, lizard gets transformed back into a guinea pig. And then one final clip here. I actually had a round where I was forfeiting just by submitting an empty team, and the opposing team was a self-destruct Anubis build. Even though it has nothing to do with the challenge, I felt like I just had to include that clip.